Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at the next major functionality to this game and that is the ability to create your own menu items. Up to this point, the customers have just been ordering predetermined meals. In this case, we're now going to show you how to make a custom menu item and then that's the item that the uh, customer would order. Obviously, you're going to have more than one item, but as I said, this is an iterative process, so we'll show you just the first one, but explain how you can add more. And yes, right now, because there's only five ingredients, it may seem a little silly to have a menu selection, but you have to start somewhere. So as the game would progress, you'd probably get more ingredients. Okay, now this functionality is going to look very similar because it works almost identical to when you're actually in the cafe and you're making the meals. You're going to click on an item and then the 3D model appears. So we click here, the bun appears, the hamburger, the bacon, the cheese, the bun, just like uh, as it does in the other one and you'll see the coding is almost identical. Reset will delete that. We basically repurpose the empty plate functionality where we have that variable that says empty plate now. And when you use that, it will um, delete this object. Add to menu is new because what we had to do is we had to create a new variable that's an array. Up to this point, we had a variable array for the orders that are currently placed for the plates that you're currently making to match those orders. Now we need a new array that says, here's all the possible things that can be ordered. And then we'll use like a randomizer or something to determine what customer and what they order. On a side note, I mentioned possibly making this an RPG themed cafe, and I'm still thinking that's the way I'm gonna go. So I think we'd have a separate tutorial indicating how the bonuses would work per item. But since that would be integral to the game, that's really also game balance. So that'll probably be the last thing that I add. Okay, so we click on add to menu, and then we click on start day. And now as you can see, that is the thing they order. So let's do just one more so you know that I am being honest here. So we'll do this time, say, two patties and cheese and the bun on top. And then we'll do add to menu and then start day. And sure enough, that's what's being ordered. Okay, so how does this work? These are 2D assets. And again, you can use whatever you want. Please don't see this and say, oh, I don't have those assets. I can't do this. The assets are here for two reasons. A, give you something to look at. B, like I said, I think I'm actually going to make this game because once again, I get distracted and I, I start trying to turn everything into a game. So window, uh, package manager, it's the Universal Burger Game Assets by Assets Brush. I believe it was $5 or whatever, $4.99. USD at the time of recording. Anyways, so um, they each have a box collider 2D and they have this script menu create. So let's go ahead and look at menu create. Let's push this over to the left since it's a new one. Very similar. This is the variable for the cloned object. This is the, the 3D model that's actually going to be instantiated the prefab that's going to be instantiated. Food value, again, this is the value that's being added because each food has a different position, the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands place. And similar, there is on mouse down. So we'll skip that top line for a minute. If game object name is not equal to 10,000, so the script is attached to these here, as you can see, I had their name match the, the numerical value that they're going to represent. So if it's not 10,000, then instantiate it here, which means if it is 10,000, instantiate it lower. Why? Because 10,000 is the bun, and the bun should always be on the bottom. So this, this instantiates right on the board, where everything else instantiates above it, and then gravity drops it down. Again, just like the other one, in fact, a little bit better, because in the other, in the other script, I think it was click place, when you're actually cooking, I named each and every object, and you really don't have to because I've cleaned it up now. So I could always go back and refine that coding with something like this. Okay, so when you click on one of the objects to the left, it looks to see what the name is, instantiates the prefab accordingly, and it also does this. So gameflow.createdMenuItem 
plus equals food value. So we already discussed what food value is that represents the individual type of food, bun, top or bottom, hamburger, so on and so forth. This is a new variable that's been created, which we'll review in a minute. This obviously, based on the name, is the object that you're currently creating. And so what will happen is this is how this value gets constructed, and then this value will be saved to a new array. Up to this point, we had an array for what is being ordered. We had an array for the plates that you're making to fill those orders. We now have an array that's going to say, here's all the possible orders that can be ordered from. And so what's going to happen is this value, created menu item, once it's finished being calculated, will then be saved to that new array. So we'll so put a pin in that. We'll come back to that in a minute. So text buttons. So these are these down here. These are text mesh pro, and these simply have again a 2D box collider somewhere. <laughs> Not box collider 2D. There we go. And then it has the text button script. So the text button script. As you can see, there's no variables. And again, it's on mouse down. And it's looking at the name of the object. So you can see there's reset, add to menu, and start day. Well, if the name of the script, uh, excuse me, if the name of the object that the script is attached to is called reset, then this is what happens when you click on on mouse down. Remember, we said that we repurposed empty plate now to uh, also empty the board. In other words, you've deleted it. If game object dot name, name is equal to add to menu, then here's that new array that we talked about, and we'll show you where it's created in a minute. So game flow dot full menu brackets zero is equal to game flow created menu item. So in the previous script, that is how that gets its value is by clicking on the images to the left. We now take that value and save it into array position zero. Now, ultimately, this will not be a constant because right now it says full menu zero. What will happen is we'll need another static variable and that this will be incremented by one. So the first menu item would be position zero, next one would be one, next one would be two, next one would be three. So right now, if you make a bunch of items, they will just overwrite each other. So this will eventually be a variable that increments by one. Because like I said, each position in the array is a different value. So again, iterative. So I didn't want to go that far and create yet another variable. I just wanted to test this to make sure that it works. Uh, uh, so if you click on add to menu, it gets saved to the zero position in the new array. But eventually that will be a variable. So you can save as many as you want. Or maybe there'll be a limit. We'll see. Uh, Gameflow.EmptyPlate now. Again, this is being utilized to empty the board. So it's the same functionality. And then this is just a debug. So it puts it into the console. You don't have to do that. So this happens if the object the script is attached to is reset. This happens if the object the script is attached to is add to menu. And then this will happen if the object the script is attached to is start day. And again, it only happens when you click on uh, when you click on the object with the mouse. So game object dot name equals uh, dot name equals start day. Scene manager dot load scene food for scene manager to work. You do need to add this using Unity engine dot scene manager. So scene manager dot load scene food. This is the name of the scene where you're actually doing the cooking. And then. I wound up not using this. I wound up not using this, but just, you know, the, the tabs are up here. So just so you were wondering, and I believe there's only two more things to show you. One is in this script. So here's that new variable. So public static int. Again, we want it to be accessible throughout the entire application. So it needs to be static. And I'm just putting in placeholder values into something gets saved to it. And so this would be the first item you create. This would be the second item you create. This would be the third item that you create. And eventually, I think I'd give you the ability to remove things from the menu. 
And doing that will uh, probably be a separate tutorial because that will be a little bit more complicated because right now it's sequential. It will always be sequential if you never delete. But if you delete this one, now we have to check every single position to see if there's any gaps. Okay, so order value. So we showed you this in previous video that you can set the order value because you, we're doing it default here, okay? But you can modify it here. So in the start section of the game flow script, which means this gets executed when the game flow script is instantiated, which happens when the scene loads. So order uh, value zero will be position zero in the full menu. Order value one will also be position zero and order value two. So this is the reason why it's showing the same one across the board. What will happen is this should also be a variable and it'll be randomized. So say you have three here, okay? Then we need to have a, um, a, um, a randomization that looks for three possibilities, position zero, one, or two. But as this increases, that randomizer would have to increase. So the randomizer itself would have to have a variable in it to say what the range should be. So again, it's iterative. So we only have the zero position being saved to the orders. So that's why they all match. But eventually, that's what we would do. And I believe the only other thing to mention is that just to make the coding simpler is that, so as I showed you before, I have two versions of the 3D models. This is the cheese that actually drops on the board, for example. This is the patty that drops on the board. And then in this folder, we then have the one that's at the bottom that you click on. Okay, well, since these have certain functionality built into them, I made a duplicate of them yet again. So now I have three version of the ingredients. And because the objects are so low memory, this was the option that I chose because it was either do this or make the script coding a lot more complicated. Now, having more complicated scripts would save memory, but again, the entire burger constructor is only something like five megabytes or 10 megabytes. So only using five more duplicates, it's not gonna move the needle as far as size of the um, project. So we'll just run through this one more time and then a few thoughts about the RPG aspect of it. So we'll do bun, we'll do two hamburgers, uh, we'll do bacon, no cheese, we'll do the top bun, we do add to menu, we do start day, and sure enough, that's what they want. Eventually, what's going to happen is since we're going to have a game save, because you're probably not going to play the game in, in just one sitting, then that array would need to be saved to a text file or whatever. Um, I'm not too worried about single player hackability. If someone is playing a game all by themselves and they want to mess with the numbers, they can knock themselves out. They're not impacting anyone. They can cheat if they want to. They've purchased the game and um, I am fine with that. So I'm fine with the text file being used to be saved because it's not impacting anyone else other than themselves. So yeah, so this would have to be saved so it remembers what you've made when you uh, exit the game. But again, making a save file is its own separate video. Okay, so I mentioned that I was thinking about the hook being that all the customers would be RPG hero type characters and that based on their class, they would order certain meals. So a warrior would want to order something that gives them HP and defense. Mages would want something that gives them more MP and maybe more int so they do more damage. Priests want something that like purifies their body, whatever. So you're going to have a range of stats that would be modified. So right now, these don't have those. But what would happen is that when you're clicking on these, we'd add a few more um, Text Mesh Pro, and they would indicate what is being modified. So what we'd probably just do is in the menu create, we would just add another variable, and this time it would be a string. And then it would just be like HP, HP, um, maybe this is strength, maybe this is agility. 
And so you would simply have a, a third variable here that shows you that. So I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not certain that's the best way to go, but that's a way to go. And then you would have that value just displayed in the text mesh pro here. Also, I don't think I'm going to use the name RPG Cafe because IBM has a website, a forum called RPG Cafe. And uh, obviously on that side of things, RPG means something entirely different. So I'll probably have to come up with like Hero Cafe or um, maybe RPG Diner, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, that's also kind of really on the nose. So maybe I might want to come up with something more uh, flamboyant, something less so literal, but we'll see. So I think that's about it for now. Please let me know what you think about this, positive or negative. Uh, please um, also do a like or even a dislike if you want. Uh, the activity certainly helps. And I think that's it for now. So uh, please do enjoy the rest of your day.